Hello, my name is George from Hardware Electronics and in this video I'm going to show you how to connect a PDM 15 or 25 to two Canvas keypads. Now as you can see on the desk I have a PDM 25 which is connected to the computer via a USB cable and I have two Blink Marine 12 button can open keypads. The keypads are connected to the PDM via the Canvas can high and can low lines with appropriate can termination resistors installed and each keypad has 12 volt external power. So to start with, let's go and connect to the PDM, go to configuration, and the first setting that you need to enter is the CAN bus speed of the PDM. Now the CAN bus speed of the PDM and the CAN bus speed of the keypad need to match. Uh, in our case, the keypad speed is 125 kilobit per second, so we will set the PDM to match that. And now we can go to the keypad tab, and you can see we have keypad one and keypad two. Now I will show you how to connect to both keypads in a moment, but for now let's look at connecting to just one keypad. Press enable, select the type of keypad that you're using. In our case, we're using a Blink Marine 12 key can open keypad. We also support the four, six and eight key versions and also the Greyhill can open keypads. Select the ID of the keypad. Now in our case, we have two keypads connected on the same CAN bus. Both keypads must have a separate CAN bus ID. Now, in our case, we have one keypad which has a CAN bus ID of 21, and the other keypad has a CAN bus ID of 32. So let's set this to 21. Next, we can set the brightness of each button on the keypad. We'll set this to uh, 30%. We can also set the color of the backlight. In our case, we'll do this to white slash light blue. And then we can set the backlight brightness and in our case, we'll set this to 30% as well. Maybe I'll actually uh, bump this up to just 40%. Okay, so after configuring the general settings for the keypad, we can move on and set up each button of the keypad. So let's set up button one. Uh, so firstly, we can add a label. I'll just add something simple like test. We can now click on configuration and doing so opens up a new window. And at the top, you can see we have the mode. Now, each button of the keypad can have three different modes, momentary, latching, or states. I'll go into each of these in detail, but to start with, let's use momentary. We can now select the off state color of the button and the on state color of the button. Uh, in our case, we'll set the on state to be green. And below this, we have the fault state. Now, the fault state can be used to turn the button of the keypad red when an output on the PDM trips. So for instance, if we had this to output one trip, when output one of the PDM trips, button one of keypad one will turn red. This will alert the user that the output has tripped and then we can press a reset button. Uh, so we'll just leave this to nothing for now and press save, press enable for that button and then press send. Okay, so you can see that nothing's happening at the moment. That's because I haven't turned on power to the keypads. So let me do that now. So turning on the keypads, you can see them go through their initialization sequence. And now you can see that just one keypad has the backlights on. So that's keypad one. And if we press button one, you can see that it turns green as we expect. And when we let go, the button goes back to normal. And if we go to the monitor tab, go to live bar view and then can keypad, we can confirm that when we press the button, the output goes from off to on, let go, it goes back to off. So that's working as we expect. Now let's go back to the configuration and set the button up to work in the latching mode. So in the latching mode, we can leave the colors the same, press send and press send here. Press okay, go back to the monitor tab. And when we press the button now, you can see that the button latches on and when we press it again, it turns off. So now let's look at the final mode of operation for a button, the states mode. And when we press states, we can have up to three states uh, per button. So let's set this to three. And now we can set the color for each state. We'll set this to blue and then state three as yellow. So now when we press the button, the button will go into state one, green. Press it again, it'll go to state two, which is blue. Press it again, it'll go to state three, which is yellow. And then press it again, it will go back to the off state. 
So press save and we can look at this now. Press send. Okay. Back to the monitor tab. Now when we press the button once, it goes green. Press it again, it goes blue. Press it one more time, it goes yellow. And press it again, it goes back to the off state. So we can use the different states of the keypad button to turn on different outputs. Uh, this could be useful, for example, to operate different modes of a wiper motor. So the first state we could have as the intermittent mode. Then we could go on to the slow wiper setting and then high. So let's look at this now, just as a little example. Go to configuration, go to outputs. So now let's set output one to come on with the, the first state of the button, output two to come on with the second state, and output three to come on with a third state. So let's set the high fuses here just to be one amp. There's nothing actually connected to the PDM at the moment, but if we have this at zero, then the outputs will blow. And now let's look at the functions for the outputs. So let's do output one. Output one is on if. Scroll down to can keypad one state one, and we want output one to be on if can keypad one state one equals at one. So if the state is equal to one, output one will be on. Similarly for output two, we want it to be on if can keep at one, can keep at one state one equals two. Press save and output three will be on if can keep at one state one equals three. Okay, save, and we want to enable each output, and press send, press OK, go back to the monitor tab, and go to outputs, and now if we press the button, the button goes through the different states as before, but you can see the outputs are turning on sequentially, so output 1 is on in state 1, then output 2, then output 3, and then back to the off state. Okay, so now let's look at what happens if we incorporate the fault state into our keypad button. So let's go back to the configuration, go to CAN keypad, and to demonstrate this feature, we'll move the keypad button back to the momentary operation, put the fault state to output one trip. Okay, so now when we press button one, output one will come on, and if output one trips, then the button should turn red. Press save, let's change the outputs. We'll turn output two and three off, and on output one, let's set the high fuse to zero so that it trips when we turn the output on. Let's also set the retries to zero so that it stays tripped. Press send. And now when we go to the monitor tab, when we press the button, you can see that it trips. And if we go to can keypad, you can see that button one of keypad one is in the fault state. Okay, so now how do we configure the PDM so that we can reset the outputs with a button on the keypad? Well, to do that, go to configuration, go to the general tab, and we want to input a global reset function. So click on the function, and let's set it so that the outputs of the PDM reset when we press button 12 of the keypad. Press equals, press true, press add, so now the global reset function will trigger when can keypad one status 12 equals true. Press save, click enable, and go back to the keypad and enable button 12. And let's make this go violet uh, so that we can see that we're resetting the outputs. Press send, press OK, and now go back to the monitor tab. And if we press button 12 of the keypad, you can see that output one resets. Press button one again and it trips. Press output 12 and it resets. Okay, so now that we've looked at how to set up one keypad, let's look at how to set up two keypads. So go back to configuration and simply go on keypad two, click enable. We're using the 12 key can open keypad from Blink Marine. We have the ID as 32. LED percentage brightness as 40. Let's set the backlight color to something different like yellow and the backlight percentage brightness to 30. And again, simply we can click enable on button one and configure it so that it turns uh, cyan when we press the button. Click save, 
click send, click OK. And now you can see that when we press the button, the keypad is operating as we suspect. And also, just to make sure, keypad 1 is still working as before. And clicking button 12 resets the output. Okay, that concludes this video. If you have any other questions, then make sure to get in touch via our email address or send us a message on one of our social media pages. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.